So here's the deal. I was thinking about doing this because, first of all, I love, I love DC animated movies. All those people out there who call me a, a Marvel bitch, while they might be right, I love the, the, what, what DC does with the animated films. I think it's universally agreed that DC rules when it comes to animation. They do. They do. And that's where they're able to do a lot of their edgiest stuff. And so when they talked about coming out with this animated version of The Killing Joke, I'm like, well, shit, if DC does it, if anybody can get that right, it's going to be the DC animated branch of their straight-to-home movies, VOD. Right. It's something that I knew that they wouldn't mess up because this is considered one of the ultimate Joker stories. I mean, this is considered a classic. If, if D- DC can fuck up Batman and Superman fighting each other all day, but that killing joke, y'all better watch yourselves with that. That is one that y'all got to get right. All these years, and I don't know who he is any more than he knows who I am. Are you sure of that? What do you mean? I mean, don't underestimate him. That's how much they have confidence in this. They think that, you know what, the imagery just sells itself. And there's a lot of imagery from the book that people, they looked at in a, in a pre-release and they were like, damn. That looks just like the comic book right there. They caught it. They got it right. Of course, the comic book was released in 1988. This is, uh, who wrote this? Alan Alan Moore. Moore. And it was also very popular because of the very detailed illustrations by Brian Bolin. And I haven't read this since college, actually, but it did leave an impression on me. uh, At the time, I loved the, uh, uh, not only did I love the artwork, but I also loved that they this is one of the few attempts to humanize the Joker. Sure. They, <laughs> it's the first time you really got anything. Like, you see his origin, and it plays out in a way. Yeah, it humanizes him, and it makes sense. And it, you come to it like, wow, I totally see how he got to where he is. Yeah, there's a it, it's something where they want to not only humanize the Joker, but they want to make him not just crazy, but... They want to make him a tragic figure. They want him to be something that you look at and you say, all right, you know what? I wouldn't want to be around him. I don't really like the guy, but I understand him. And with the, with, the, with the day that he had, I can understand why he's trying desperately to show people, hey, you know what? Let you just slip up for one day, too. And you, too, can be as <laughs> fucked up as I am. Right. Hey, it's just, uh, just circumstance, the reason why I'm here. I'm not evil. Nothing's truly evil, right? And... I, and I studied the artwork too, man. I used to love that artwork. Oh, Brian Bowen, he's one of the best. And he he's an artist who mostly does covers. It's rare for him to do a whole book. I mean, he, he did like a whole series Camelot 3000 way back in the day, but not much else. And I, yeah, I used to love that, man. This has, this has nothing to do with anything. I just found this when I was looking for like one of the big classic pieces from this book. And uh, I found this picture of a uh, fuzzy bear. I thought <laughs> it had nothing to do with anything. I just thought it was funny. He's losing his shit going, waka, 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 waka. <laughs> wow, that's scary. <laughs> I ain't never seen fuzzy bear look so frightening right there. But Kermit finally drove his ass crazy, man. <laughs> just one bad day, man. <laughs> but, um, you know, the look, I'm a, I, I, if y'all aren't in the comics, Y'all don't give a shit. Look, everybody loves Batman, and everybody loves a Joker. I know y'all don't want to hear a bunch of nerd shit, but I, I, I bear with, with you to just hear this. I'll try to break it down in some very relatable terms for you people out there who aren't comic book nerds or geeks. Because this is one of my favorite books, and I really want to tell you some of the differences and similarities between this and what they did in the movie. And if you can, I at least urge you to go and read the book. It's a, it's just, it's a very well-written book. And it was controversial, even at the time sure. when it came out. One of the big one of the big things about it that was controversial was was uh, Barbara Gordon. Everybody knows Commissioner Gordon. Every time that back signal goes up, Commissioner Gordon is a dude that's waiting by the lamp, mm-hmm. by, that, by that, that big spotlight. He's the one I always turn around and sees Batman going like, "God damn it, I hate when he does that <laughs> shit," you know. But uh, he, a lot, I don't know if people know this. He has, he has a daughter, Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl. And in this book, it's controversial because a lot of people consider it sexist, and the reason why is because. The Joker put a bullet in her spine, and she was used as a pawn to drive Commissioner Gordon crazy, thus proving his point. There were even insinuations of rape that went on in there. Right. I mean, you know that he undresses her and takes photos of her. Um, and, yeah, people, yeah, the, the insinuation of rape, but really if you go back and read it, because I've gone back and read it yeah. several times, and there's nothing that really 
says it. It's not even it's not even as implied as it seems. I and I'm not, and, and I, I'm not a person who sees a lot of sexism in this, but I understand. I understand people being mad because you know, that, especially at the time, well, everybody loved you know, her character. Everybody loved that character. And um, people were still talking about not many strong females, and now you're using one of the strongest ones as a pawn to get back at, at a guy. But it's what made it so effective. And, and well, it definitely kept people talking about it for years. So this is when DC came in and said, you know something, we're going to set this shit straight. All this controversy, and y'all feel like we did bad girl bad, we're going to come in and we're going to make amends for that. And a lot of people, that's, that was the biggest question. Did they actually come in and make a better story as far as uh, as far as Batgirl story goes and the answer for at least for me is hell no to, it, to me it's they did the opposite they, and it was almost like it was almost like DC went and made a, a worse movie so people could quit talking about the book <laughs> right. oh, they, oh they did some defiant shit you know oh you think there was sexism in the book well I'm gonna show you some goddamn sexism yeah, yeah. right here now this is sexism for you <laughs> rub this shit right in your face <laughs> no man let me tell you something as far as uh, and you know me look I'm not gonna try to come up here I don't wanna uh, cause the first thing y'all gonna say is oh you just a social justice warrior you know you trying to look out for Batgirl Batgirl ain't gonna fuck you man you know I, I don't think anybody's gonna say that cause what you're, what you're about to say is has been the opinion across the board. It, the shit is bad. I don't know how much more to tell you. This is some of the shittiest writing I've ever seen as far as taking a classic piece of literature. Yeah, I'm calling the book literature. As far as taking a classic piece of literature and trying to better it, trying to make it more accessible, trying to say like we are making this more socially relatable. No, y'all fuck this completely up. Y'all change this. And to a, a, a CW show. They, well, I feel like that's, I mean, what you're saying is absolutely true, but only for the first third of it. The part they, they tacked on that wasn't in the book. Oh, I got more after that, but that's the main thing right there. They tacked on about 30 minutes of a fucking telenovela on this thing. Mm. Not only is it bad because they didn't do well by this character, but it's also bad because, you know, they, they, they're they taken away from from the story. While you're trying to, like, give more of a backstory to this girl right here, you're actually, you're actually taking away the meat of the story, which is the dynamic between the Joker and Batman. Yeah, none of this has anything to do with the killing joke. It really doesn't. I mean, the idea that you give Batgirl uh, a story, it's not really happening because the story you give her, you make her, she she looks clingy, and you you end up not liking her. And it's it's almost like they they... They took this opportunity, like, they could have really used that 30 minutes to flesh out the main story even more. But oh, yeah. what they did, they took an opportunity because back from the, the animated series, there's a point where, where Robin left. Like, him and Batman just broke up. He's like, eh, man, fuck you. And, like, you knew there was a big rift between them. Mm -hmm. And then they also <laughs> dropped later, even in Batman um, Beyond, that Batman and Batgirl had a thing for a little bit. Like, they were more than friends. You never really knew what, how that tied into each other. It wasn't until an issue... Of Batman Beyond that came out, I think last year or year before, where it got explained that like, yeah, Robin had left a little bit. Him and Batman and Batgirl hooked up. He got back. The two of them, Robin and her, tried to get back together, but she got pregnant from that one time they hooked up and and lost the baby. It was all kinds of <laughs> shit. But it's like they took this opportunity to try to bridge the gap between you know filling that story. And it's like that wasn't really asked for look, or needed look, here. Look. It's some creepy shit going on here. Let me just sum it up what you just said. It's some creepy fucking shit going on yeah. here. Yeah. Because the whole time Batman is treating this girl like a little sister, all kind of like his daughter. There's even a point here where he stops to talk, to not to her, but to look at us. <laughs> I, I see you looking at her ass. Don't you objectify that girl. I mean, the movie stops to preach to you, to make us feel like shit. Talking about don't objectify Batgirl or women. Because they're really trying hard to separate themselves from the book. I told you I'm no punk. In fact, I got you a gift. Something special for my special girl. Just go back to where we met. You'll see. Cute. It's not cute. It's a trick. I know, but it is a little flattering. No, he doesn't know you. He's objectified you. When a criminal gets personal like that, it's bad news. You know, it's almost like he's talking to me. And I'm like, okay, I got the, I got the message, man. I'm cool. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna look at that ass no more. We're good. We're good. But the, the, the problem here is that five minutes later, man. And here's the, here's the deal. Batman been talking shit to us, and the whole time he's, he's been playing the long con on this girl. 
I, he, I, you know, no, I, I don't get that. No, let me, let me tell you something. And you look and see if you pay attention, y'all. Especially for these dudes out here. I, you think I'm bad because I tell y'all how to pick up girls, and I tell you, you know, just act like an asshole, man. Or better yet, just act like that that silent type that don't give a fuck about chicks. Batman's doing this shit where he's playing that dark. I'm so dark and forlorn, and I, I'm, I, you don't want to be with a bad guy like me. You never been in the dark places I've been to. Trying to talk all that shit that, you know, high school girls, they usually think, are deep. I mean, practically giving a speech right here. You haven't been taken to the edge yet. The edge of what? <laughs> the abyss. The place where you don't care anymore. Where all hope dies. She's like, that's so fucking deep. I want to fuck this guy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, look at her. She's moist to the motherfucker right now. She already was. She's so thirsty for Batman that she's transferring her lust onto that criminal. Man, Batman and, knew what and, he was doing. And, 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 she, and she's using that. And she's kind of throwing it in Batman's face to make him jealous. Man, he's doing and, that. And, man, it's, and it's working. He's doing that Pee Wee Herman shit. You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. <laughs> I would like to better when he did it, man. At least he wasn't fucking around. He meant what he said. All he cared about was that bicycle. He didn't give a fuck about that chick. But Batman knew what he was doing. And I and it and, and, and wasn't like it wasn't five minutes later, man, before that fucking bat suit came off that girl, man. He knew what he was doing. Had his back turned. When, when his back turned, he was like, I'm I, I can't do anybody. You haven't been to the abyss like me. <laughs> you knew what he, he knew what he was doing and I'd be damned if it didn't work you want to talk about a really badly written female character this chick right here is the worst yeah. they did her terrible ah <laughs> Grabbing ass. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Spicy went like, no, leave it on. This god- goddamn cargo looking at the Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playing some shit like that. Oh yeah, gargoyle looking down. You can slowly see that hand going to that gargoyle dick. Yeah. He looks up and sees a camera and he his hand back. Yeah. And they're watching him have bad sex. I mean, come on, man. And you know what? I mean, just five minutes ago, we were getting a a, a speech about ob- objectifying, but that didn't keep him from grabbing that ass right there. I mean, come on, you know, if you're gonna do something, stick stick to it, stick to your Man, word. That, 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 that's guys all the time. You're like, Psh, you like that guy? That guy's full of shit. He'll just tell you whatever you want to he you want to hear just so he can fuck you. Well, secretly, the guy who's saying that is like, yeah, I gotta eliminate the competition. But the deal <laughs> is, is that this movie's trying to sell this character. It's trying to like say that we have done better by this character because of the controversy that happened. Yeah, and you can't be, you can't have that argument when you got this chick up here grabbing fucking ass and everything. No, it's you like, can't. No, this is this is objectifying. And furthermore, and Corey Goodwin actually showed this yesterday. I'm gonna show you again. On top of that, to show you how much of an asshole Batman is after he after, after he hit that shit. You know how dudes are after when they when they been going at that chick for a long time. And when they finally get that ass, all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, babe, I got better things to do." You know, I, I you know, I, uh, uh yeah, uh, you know, we, we just friends. You know, come on, man, tell me he didn't do this shit to her. Look, no, no, you okay? Tell me you've never done this where you were being pursued by a girl and you knew it was a bad idea. Maybe you work together or you see each other or, or something, or you know that ultimately you don't really like her personality that much. But hey, you get drunk, it's happening, it's on, it does. Martin. And the next day she she's calling you, Martin. and then it's all logic, and you're like. Fuck! How do Martin, I get out of this? This motherfucker was sober. This yeah, no, he's sober. He the was next looking day. at her. Look he's at like, look at the way he did. Look idea. at the way he did this girl right here. And he even told her right down. To, he even tried to close out with no cool Batman shit. Look at this. Hey. Hi. Nothing on cable tonight, so I thought I'd get out and get some exercise. Tell me, how's Paris these days? He's on the move. We got a tip he might be hiding out at the docks. That's where I am right now. That wouldn't be an invitation, would it? No. I was just kidding. But I'm not that far away. No. 
quick nose, man. What after you get him? What then? Are we back in business? Oh, come on. We'll talk later. It was just sex, for God's sake. It doesn't have to mean anything. It's not like we have to care. I don't care. You don't care. We just go back like it was. That's all. Please. Later. Bitch gets no love. Bitch gets no love. <laughs> man, he did her wrong. Bitch gets no love. Man. Bitch gets no love. <laughs> Man, you, you man, he did. She's got to shut it down. She's mm. she's out of control. She's she's turning to everything he was worried about to begin with. And for a detective, she is not getting the clues. Martin, <laughs> he wasn't saying that shit when he was on top of a building and grabbing his ass, fucking his chick. When, when she you climbed know. on top of him, when she threw him to the ground and climbed on top Dude, of him. He's supposed to be a better man. He's so, he, he just gave us a speech about hey, not man. objectifying Everybody people. can be a better man, but just not all the time. Martin. You can sit up here and be contradictory to me all you want to, but they You know it's they, true. They wrote this 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 is a shitty way to to it's not just a bad way to well, write we agree this character. That. It's not just a bad way to write this character. It's a shitty way to just write a scene. Yeah. They were on the job. Right. You know, they were doing some shit. His dick shouldn't even be hard. He should be like, hey, we're trying to stop a criminal. And they're on, on top of a roof having sex. This is some of the worst writing I have seen for a movie, period. And they trying and they're and, the reason why it's so bad is because they want to force this so hard to be rated R. They want to be such the gritty, yeah. the gritty branch of superheroes right now. I don't mind that, but at least, at least find some kind of way to make it make sense. At least write it in a well way. This would be writing. This this writing would be bad for anything live action, animated, superhero, non superhero. This is uh this is something where I'm you know it's almost offensive not only to, to the character to a female character but it's offensive to them taking the, somebody's great writing and and dumbing it down like this. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't put his name in the credits. Well, good, they shouldn't. I wouldn't want my name in the credits here either. But what about when we get to the heart of the Killing Joke, the book that's actually the, the, the actual book? And I would say that there's problems there too. And the biggest problems for me is that they don't. You ch look, you added thirty minutes. Of, of a story that wasn't even in the book to change this around. And the other part of that, the problem with that is that they're trying to be too faithful to other parts. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what time period to make this in. And that 30 minutes that they added there that we didn't have, people, they got the internet. There. There's a guy up here hacking. The, the, the 30 minutes that we have is this guy named per Perry France. Fish. Right. Him trying to, to go every... against his uncle, and uh, he's hacking his uncle to steal his money, and that's the case that, that they're trying to solve. There's, a, there's modern technology there. The problem with that is that when we start doing flashbacks of the Joker, of his past, that stuff, it looks like it's set in the 1950s. Like it's a 1950s film war. Right. I usually don't drink at lunchtime. You're not lying when you say we'll get away with it. And nobody will know I was involved. What the fuck is wrong with this dude back here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's when those, those those broke down gin joints. That's where people go to that's just fuck, just die in a bottle of, in, a, in a in a glass of whiskey. This is the bar that everybody goes to before they go to commit suicide. Oh, yeah. It's like the, the writing in there. In addition, it seemed like it's out of time. The, maybe these words weren't just meant to be out of the book because it can get really melodramatic. This is some of the times where I've seen Batman have some very bad lines, but in the flashbacks when they get very melodramatic, especially during the worst times of the Joker before he was the Joker. Those are, and I'm sure those are the words taken from the book, but they're just read, they're read so bad. And it's Mark Hamill doing it. And I like the way he did separate himself from the Joker personality. He kind of kept hints of it in there, but his line reading is terrible. Jesus, all I said was... You said, oh, it's an oh, so you didn't get the job. It's an oh, I should have known. It's an oh, so how are we going to feed our baby? You think I'm not worried about that? You think it's all a big joke to me? I have to go up on stage and, and nobody laughs. And you think I don't care? You think? You think? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, it's like, wow, man. If, you know, I, I never thought I could say this, but that cartoon character is overacting, man. You know, that's an animated character. Yeah. And that's some of the worst acting that I've seen. One of the things that I will say, I'm not saying that the Joker is completely terrible because uh, there there are moments when they, and for me, I don't know how it is for you, Martin, but for me, it doesn't pick up until near the end. I mean, if you're a fan of this book, the stuff that they, when it gets more demented and they finally start getting right to the relationship between Batman and the Joker, and 
Mark Hamill starts doing his real Joker and, and does it justice by showing, by showing you just how insane this version of the Joker is, that's when it's at its best. I mean, do you ever think about how many times we've come close to World War III over a flock of geese on a computer screen? Silly goose, it's all a joke. Everything anybody's ever valued or struggled for Stop doing that. monstrous. Why can't you see the funny side? Why aren't you laughing? Man, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> Shut your ass. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll let you hit me with a pan. I'll let you kick me. <laughs> you're going to be tearing no more of your shit right there, man. <laughs> Look at Joker. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like the music in that scene, too, though. You know, I think that there's a lot of production that's coming in a little bit too late. One of the things that people were saying in early reviews of this, they were saying, well, you know, one of the best things about this is that at least they're trying to stick close to the comic. I've seen certain frames where they get it right. And they, sure. on the times where they, they absolutely have to get it right, like that scene right there with the Joker when he loses his mind for the first time, they, they take that right out the comic and, and they use a lot of shading you know, and a lot of, uh, a lot of color and they, they get it down. Yeah, they nail that. And there's, there's also scenes in the background. There's like this one with these images of the Joker pasted up and you could tell it's like they're Joker but drawn from images from, from different from, from different movies from different movies yeah yeah, yeah I like, that was a good piece of, of homage right there however and I'm not saying this is good I'm not saying this is bad it's a stylistic thing that you can either be you can either like accept or be built up on because a lot of people are saying it's just like the comic which is not they just cannot capture the texture and the detail that you see mm. in the comic right there I have one where uh, Commissioner Gordon is losing his shit and then you look at the, the, the animated version they got the poses down. They got some similar compositions, but it's just not it's the not same. It's not as powerful. No, and it's not as powerful. And, and that's what I found throughout uh, so many places where it just wasn't as powerful or something about reading it, the timing was different. Like the like something that always stuck with me was the scene where the police come in and tell the Joker that his wife died. And yeah. how he was just like, what? And that's just not there. Um, it's uh, I, There's so much about it that I think they do well. And some things I think are off, stuff you pointed out. Um, and you're right. The closer it gets to the end, the better it gets. Uh, however, a big thing for me was that I found the ending to be awkward. Yeah. You know why the ending is awkward? And this is my biggest problem right here. I was actually going to say, I was going to, I was going to give this somewhat of a slight pass. But the thing that really pissed me off is that, at the, and I'm not going to even show you a frame from it. I'm not going to talk about it that much. But there is one last frame one piece of art that is missing from this that gives this a whole completely different meaning. Well, I know for me, um, like, but the the ending, at least from the book, the, the what could have fixed the ending for me would have been I don't know whatever art, but just the sound of sirens coming up in the background. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the story, you know, it's all said and done, but you know, the, the police are coming to like end this shit. Well, and we, the, don't want, we don't want to spoil them. Right, right. <laughs> but here, it almost feels like. Everybody just has kind of a, a laugh, and it just kind of like, all right, I guess we can, th th everything will be cool. And it's like, after all this shit we just witnessed, how is this just going to end with a, a pat on the back and everything's cool? Yeah, you know, that's, and that's the biggest problem with this is that they're trying to tie this so much. They're doing two things. They're trying to make this a Batgirl story for pussy-ass reasons. And they're trying to, uh, in, in which they made a more sexist story. It's horrible. And they tried to tie this into, this is a standalone comic. Mm -hmm. It's a, this is an alternate universe Batman story. It's supposed to stand on its own. Nobody's supposed to like try to, to cram this into the, any storyline that's out there. But they do it with this. In fact, they give us some fucking Marvel mid-credit stinger. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, oh, it ain't over yet though. And it's like, man, fuck you, it is. It's done. <laughs> it's just been done for the first 30 minutes. You know, this is, this is, uh, yeah, this is something that is just, it's, I don't want to hear nobody out there, all right? Because you know, a lot of people going to come in and start telling me, see, man, you did, if it was something with Marvel and if it was Iron Man doing this shit, you'd be all right. No, I've read this book. Some people look, go on, go on YouTube and they're like, I bet they, these guys are assholes. They haven't even read some of these books before I've read this I've read this in every other fucking book I try to cover this shit like I'm not a nerd I'm a biggest fucking nerd in the world all I did was come home and read comics I wasn't getting no pussy so that's all I did you know what I mean there's the one time I'll come out and tell you shit I went home and read comics and, and wish shit I, you know what that's what maybe I am jealous of Batman 
You know what I mean? I, I wish I was the one grabbing that ass right there. You know, I wish I was Batman when I was growing up. So I read all these books. So I can sit up here and tell you, for all you people are sitting up here giving this a pass, for giving this, saying that it's okay, you know, it's kind of it's close enough. No, fuck you. If you're a fan of this book and you're sitting up here saying that this is even decent, then you are a fucking sellout yourself. You are not, you, this betrays everything that the original book was. It betrays everything that people talked about with Batgirl, whether you agree they had a point or not. This betrays just a great piece of art. I'm on the verge of giving this some bullshit. For me, personally, it is some old bullshit. This could not be. This could be any property, and I would say it's badly written. And I don't even like the animation. Yeah. Well, I pointed that out when we watched the trailer. How jerky it was. That they don't. They, they This is done. The frame rate on these mm -hmm. things. You know, they they animated this. That's another thing. If you're gonna do this, if you're gonna do an iconic uh, piece of uh, piece of work, go all out. They do this art. This this animation is choppy. Yeah. I don't like this kind of style where there's no that you know there's no there's no weight to the to the lines. Yeah. Uh, when they have to do action, it goes fast enough to where you don't notice. But when they have to do moments of drama, and they sit up there popping and shit, when they move, <laughs> popping. Like, yeah, when they sit up there popping and locking and shit, yeah, Commissioner Gordon, I want to say a word. Your daughter's dead. You know, I don't want to hear that shit, man. I don't want to see that shit. It's this is some old bullshit to me. But I'm gonna for the things that it did get right a little bit too late. Uh, I'm gonna give this a very low rental. It should be seen out of curiosity, uh, if nothing else. And a lot of people want to see it for that. I mean, you know, take notes for yourself. But I can't see true fans com giving us a complete pass. Uh, well, I, I'm, I don't feel like I'm giving it a complete pass. But I, I recognize the things that, that were done well about it. I Personally, I never like when they do adaptations of stories that already exist. I'm like, well, so much of the, the real work has already been done for you. I, I'm not going to get anything new out of it just seeing it move. I, I get more from, from reading it and having my own brain, you know, <laughs> fill in the gaps. Um so here, the best it could have been was nothing better than I've already seen. And unfortunately, they made the really the worst choice ever in that first 30 minutes of, of what to fill in the time with, rather than to flesh out the story and add more to it. And like you said, animation is not great. At the same time, there are, were moments when I was impressed by what they did when they actually did an adaptation of the story. I, I don't quite give it some old bullshit, but it is a run-off. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I... I mean, honestly, that first 30 minutes is so bad, it's worth seeing just to check it out. Actually, it is. That's why I say rent it. I've, this is one of the few times we say rent something because it's a piece of shit. I mean, <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, I was watching it, and I was like, um, am I watching the right movie? Is this going to be the killing joke? I know it said it was the killing joke, but I don't know where this is going. Yeah, you probably thought you... You probably thought you rented one of those uh, those those porno parodies. Right. <laughs> you know? No, you're not. Hey, I, I did. Martin had his dick out and everything. And they get into the story like, oh shit. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> and it really does. It, it doesn't even integrate the two stories that well. Uh, it's like it just one goes off and the next one starts up. Uh, don't have my ass up there looking like fuzzy bear trying to watch this shit. <laughs> The, the, the fuck am I watching? <laughs> walk <-a -walk> <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel and go over to our home, doubletoasted.com for more videos and live streams. And remember, stay toasty.